Welcome to the Ductile Iron Pipe Research Association, or DIPRA's, presentation. Today, we'll talk about trends in our industry, an awful lot of great history and achievement leading up to the present, and how we are preparing to meet the challenges of the next 100 years. Now, a trend is not just a point on a graph. It's not two points. It's a series of points that begins in the past and carries through to today. It shows us what to expect going forward. Today, we'll talk about the success of iron pipe, why it has long been a very popular material. We will follow the life cycle of a ductile iron pipeline and provide a history about the innovation and advancement of the industry over the years. And we will talk about DIPRA's vision and commitments as we continue our storied history of always providing the most modern pipe material. In January 1831, Albert Stein, a German engineer, was named the director of Nashville's Water Committee and given the job of building the city's first waterworks. After studying the area, he came up with a plan to pump water from the Cumberland River, just north of the city, and carry it into Nashville through cast iron pipe that he ordered from two brothers in Pittsburgh. By 1833, he had completed the project at a total cost of $55,000. If you go to Nashville today, you can still see some of this pipe, if you dig it up. According to Nashville's Metro Water Services, there are at least three water mains that have been in continuous service since they were installed in 1832. This undoubtedly speaks very well for the people who installed that pipe in 1832, the people who maintain that pipeline, and of course, it speaks well about the pipe itself. But it also speaks well of the original decision to use the best pipe material that was around then and we know always will be. We don't know if Mr. Stein expected to have his pipelines last 180 years, but they have. It's a terrific run, but nothing lasts forever. In 2008, the city announced a five-year plan to replace the city's oldest mains, many of which were well over 100 years old. And when it came time to lay down new pipe, they decided to continue to use the material that had provided such remarkable service, iron pipe, ductile iron pipe. Nashville is just one example of a utility, like many of your customers, that has relied on iron to carry its water for more than a century. But there are many more cities like it. In fact, DIPRA currently has 622 members of our Century Club in the U.S. and Canada, and 24 members of our Sesquicentury Club, which is made up of communities that have had the same iron pipe in service for more than 150 years. In fact, communities like Philadelphia, 1824, and Montreal, 1816, are nearing 200 years. And there is an iron pipeline in Versailles, France, that still carries water to the fountains at Versailles, some 350 years after its installation. But now, after a century or more of service, many communities are recognizing the need to renew their water pipeline infrastructure for future generations. Think about that. A pipe material using 100-year-old metallurgy, 100-year-old casting technology, and 100-year-old engineering has given communities a record of service that allows them to prioritize their needs for infrastructure renewal. With modern metallurgy, modern manufacturing, modern joints, and modern engineering, we can manufacture, design, and install a pipeline whose expectations are an outgrowth of its predecessors, a benchmark of more than 100 years of service. And so, as it was with the decisions made by Albert Stein in Nashville, the decisions being made today will establish a legacy for generations to come. Deciding on the right pipe material can impact all of the following issues over the course of the pipe life cycle. Planning and design, installation, maintenance, reliability of water service, energy costs, environmental impact, the cost of replacing the pipe, the environmental impact of the manufacturer is another important consideration, and this is a trend DIPRA is ready to meet. We have to consider the entire life cycle of the pipeline, from the cradle to the grave, and for iron pipe, from the earth to the water to the sky. So let's go through the real-world life cycle of a ductile iron pipeline, from manufacture and installation to operation and maintenance to the long-term impact on energy costs and the environment and show you how consideration of these life cycle costs translates into true value from ductile iron pipe. The life cycle of ductile iron pipe begins in the earth with raw materials like iron ore. 
However, that ore was mined years ago. The raw material used today is post-consumer recycled iron and steel. So, not only does ductile iron pipe come from the earth, recycling scrap iron and steel to make ductile iron pipe is also good for the earth. Our pipe is made from 100% recycled scrap metal, and the final product can contain as much as 95% recycled material. It's a phenomenal number. To create ductile iron pipe, we put our raw materials through a melting furnace, treat it with magnesium to transform gray cast iron into ductile iron, and then transfer it to a casting machine. After casting, annealing sets the ferritic character of the iron and readies it for the cement mortar lining and the distinctive black paint. As you can see here, ductile iron is highly standardized with conservative performance-based consensus standards for ease of design and maintenance. They cover manufacture, design, fittings, joints, corrosion control, and installation. And they are practical standards that take advantage of ductile iron pipe's tremendous strength to account for the realities of pipeline installation and use. We'll let some engineers and utility managers speak for themselves. In my 33 years in the water infrastructure industry, I have not found any other material stronger than ductile iron pipe. Our decision has been to uh, pretty much stay with something that we know is reliable, that we know is dependable, and that has worked for us over the years. We have not had any instances of failure with ductile iron pipe since we started using ductile iron in the 1970s. We have the lowest amount of main breaks per mile in the state of Montana. Ductile iron has proven itself to be the pipe of choice. We really don't uh have pipe materials out there at this point that match the strength of ductile iron pipe. Water infrastructure is here for a long time. It's a long-term business. You really want to be able to have the best products in your system. We believe that ductile iron pipe is, is, is the best. It's just far and above better than the other materials that are available these days. We manufacture a pipe that is significantly thicker than required by design considerations we apply a very conservative design procedure. The reason we do this is because of ductile iron's tremendous strength. As an example, consider our 12-inch Pressure Class 350 pipe. Pressure Class 350 ductile iron pipe is a pipe with a working water pressure of 350 PSI. In addition, we add a nominal 100 PSI surge allowance and use a factor of safety of 2.0, so the design pressure is 900 PSI. The required thickness for 12-inch Pressure Class 350 ductile iron pipe, according to AWWA standards, is 0.14 inches. This is the thickness required to contain the internal pressure, including working and surge pressures, and to sustain external loads. But we go beyond the required thickness. First, we add a service allowance of 0.08 inches. This is a traditional thickness that dates back to cast iron pipe design. It adds to the robust character of ductile iron pipe and increases its inherent factor of safety. And then an allowance for the casting tolerance to ensure the factor of safety is never compromised when the pipe is made. The casting tolerance for this particular pipe is 0.06 inches, but will range from 0.05 inches to 0.09 inches depending on the size of the pipe. In this example, 12-inch pressure class 350 ductile iron pipe has a nominal thickness of 0.28 inches, which is twice the pipe thickness required, a conservative design that provides a safer, more reliable pipe for those communities fortunate enough to use ductile iron pipe. Iron pipe has a centuries-old proud history, a history of significant innovations. Over the past 100 years, we have taken an incredibly reliable pipe material and made it even better. Here are just a few of those innovations. The first significant innovation was the development of the centrifugal casting process in 1921 by Dimitri Senso de Laveau. This process revolutionized the iron pipe industry. The next major innovation was the introduction of cement mortar lining to prevent internal corrosion, first applied in an existing water pipeline in Charleston, South Carolina in 1922. Cement mortar lining provides improved hydraulics that are maintained over the life of the pipeline. Today, cement mortar lining is part of the standard manufacturing process, and internal corrosion is a non-issue for ductile iron water pipelines. Beginning in the 1920s and continuing today, 
The iron pipe industry has conducted hundreds of research projects involving thousands of pipe specimens installed in test sites all over the United States, from tidal marshes in Absecon, New Jersey, to the Everglades in Florida, to tight clays in Arkansas, to alkaline environments in Utah, peat bogs in Wisconsin, stray current tests in Texas and Nevada, and more. That research also includes investigations of in-service installations and cast and ductile iron pipe under varying conditions. To learn more about how to ensure that Iron Pipe's reputation for service remains and continues to improve. In 1955, ductile iron pipe was first introduced to the marketplace. Over the next several years, because of its tremendous strength, ductile iron grew in popularity until it completely supplanted cast iron as a pressure pipe. In 1956, the push on joint was developed. This joint is simple to install and has incredible ability to sustain pressures from complete vacuums to very high internal pressures. Next, as a direct result of DIPRA research, we introduced an effective and economical solution for external corrosion, polyethylene encasement. First installed in 1958 in an operating system in Lafouche Parish, Louisiana, polyethylene encasement has proven its ability to protect iron pipe from aggressive soils in those areas where this is a challenge. In the 1960s, restrained joints were developed by the industry. Their popularity has spread to other pipe materials as well, but originated in our industry. Even today, the ductile iron pipe industry is not standing still. In 2003, DIPRA worked with Corpro companies to develop a risk-based corrosion control model derived from 75 years of research and experience. We built a database comprising results from DIPRA research, DIPRA field investigations, member company research and investigations, and Corpro investigations. That database was then subjected to a statistical analysis to provide a scientific basis for the development of the design decision model for corrosion control. In 2012, DIPRA and its members achieved SMART certification as a sustainable product, and in 2013, we introduced an enhanced polyethylene encasement, V-Bio, that is infused with a patented combination of a biocide and a corrosion inhibitor. V-Bio is an evolutionary innovation that takes an already successful method of corrosion control for ductile iron pipe to a new level. DIPRA is continuing to research and test V-Bio in various sites across the country, to gain an appreciation of how well VBio performs under different circumstances. So, after all that innovation, how does today's ductile iron pipe compare to a material like PVC? First, our pipe comes from the earth. Their pipe was designed in a lab. Whereas ductile iron comes from recycled iron and steel, PVC is made from gas, oil, and chlorine. The production of PVC resins involved the use of ethylene dichloride to make the vinyl chloride monomer and the release of dioxins, all of which have been deemed toxic carcinogens. Because it's a plastic, you don't measure PVC strength with a standard tensile test like you measure ductile iron pipe. Instead, PVC is tested in a lab, and here is how the process goes. PVC pipe design is based on a plot of failure points that expresses the time to failure as a function of the applied stress in the walls of PVC pipe. PVC fails sooner at higher stresses and later at lower stresses. By definition, PVC pipe design is based on the stress that would result in failure in 100,000 hours, which is 4,000 psi at a temperature of 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the hydrostatic design basis, or HDB. Using a factor of safety of 2.0, the design stress of PVC is 2,000 psi. So that explains what would happen theoretically, but we all know we don't live and work in a theoretical world. When you actually put a pipe in the ground in the real world, there are several factors that can intensify the stress on it, such as overbelling, taps, scratches, point loading, bending. Temperature can also be a factor. At both high and low temperatures, the strength of PVC pipe can be affected. For example, in hot climates like Phoenix, water temperatures can reach more than 90 degrees, almost 20 degrees above the design temperature and this can significantly decrease the strength of the pipe. Fatigue over time is another factor. Here you can see the cyclic design basis, which is 1500 psi, below the hydrostatic design stress. This means that if you allow the stress to rise to 2000 psi, you are above the fatigue limit and, with a sufficient number of pressure fluctuations, the pipe will fail. 
All of this means that you need to be that much more careful and that much more concerned when it comes to PVC pipe. For example, even a small scratch, one that extends just 10% of the pipe, can significantly affect the performance of a PVC pipe. According to ANSI AWWA standards, any observed gouges or scratches that extend 10% or more into the pipe wall should justify rejection of the pipe. For an 8-inch DR18 PVC pipe, a scratch of 10% of the wall is just 0.05 inches, the thickness of a dime. In the real world, scratches happen, and PVC is a whole lot easier to scratch and gouge than ductile iron. When you have a pipe material that isn't built to withstand the stresses of the real world, unfortunately, things like this start to happen. The durability of ductile iron is an important consideration when you make your choice of pipe material, but it's even more important when it comes time to bring water from a place like this to a community like yours. This isn't the only difference when it comes to how you install pipe in the real world. Here are just a few more examples. Ductile iron is impervious to permeation by hydrocarbons, while PVC is susceptible. Ductile iron strength allows it to take on tough conditions like rocky areas, whereas such installations expose PVC to potential localized stress. Ductile iron can accommodate long, sweeping turns by deflecting its joints. PVC must be bent manually in the field, setting up differential stresses, which PVC doesn't take well. The only potential advantage for PVC is the idea that a PVC pipe is lighter. But you won't see a PVC pipe being carried by hand, for practical and legal considerations, and you'll need the same backhoe to install PVC pipe that you use to install ductile iron pipe. Speaking of tapping in the real world, here's a picture of a ductile iron pipe that has been tapped more than 50 times and subjected to 500 psi pressure without any problems. Because of its strength, you can install service taps as close together as the tapping machines will allow. Meanwhile, PVC has a long list of rules surrounding how to tap a pipe. This is a copy of the Unibel PVC Pipe Association Tapping Guide for PVC Pressure Pipe. This is the type of guide that utilities like yours get when they choose to install PVC pipe, so it's important to consider what these rules would mean for your engineers and field teams. And it is a cautionary tale a listing of all of the different things you can or cannot do. For example, certain sizes and classes of PVC cannot be direct tapped. You can't install taps too close to the ends of the pipe or to each other, and you have to be wary when tapping in very hot or very cold weather. Tapping ductile iron pipe is not quite the chore it is for PVC pipe. In fact, it is so safe and reliable that there are contests at AWWA section and national meetings to see how quickly the pipe can be tapped. But as you can see, the Unibel Tapping Guide includes a sizable list of installation do-nots. Here are just a few. Do not tap if the radius of the bend is less than 300 times the pipe outside diameter. Do not distort the pipe by over-tightening the tapping machine or the saddle. Do not overfeed the cutter. Do not tap without a heavy protective blanket. Do not tap without knowing the locations of the nearest isolation valves and make sure those valves operate properly. The reliability of our pipe has another benefit as well, and that has to do with the cost of replacement. A recent AWWA study entitled Buried No Longer presented an analysis of performance data that found the average estimated service life for modern ductile iron pipe, including corrosion control, was about 110 years versus about 70 years for PVC. And while some regions reported PVC service lives as low as 55 years, all regions reported ductile iron pipe service lives of at least 105 years. Clearly, there is an advantage here for ductile iron pipe when you consider and compare life cycle costs and the replacement of the pipe. Here's what that means for you. If you can maintain your pipe in the ground longer without replacement, that brings down the overall cost of your infrastructure. Dipra is always looking for new ways to make our product better. And we recently introduced an enhanced polyethylene casement called V-Bio. V-Bio is an evolutionary advancement in pipe protection that adds a new dimension to the long service life utilities have come to expect from ductile iron pipe. Years in the making, this breakthrough innovation is a co-extruded polyethylene encasement enhanced with a biocide and a corrosion inhibitor. Yet another layer of protection for iron pipe in the most aggressive soils. We're always looking to the future here at DIPRA, but we realize 100 years is a long way off. 
We know that municipalities are also concerned about the running cost of your pipe this year, next year, and the year after. After all, a water utility's electricity costs comprise a significant percentage of their overall costs. So what is the price we're paying to draw energy from the environment and release it back into the sky? Here's something that the ductile iron folks and the PVC folks agree on. Water flow impacts energy savings. But here's where we differ. They will point to their higher C factor as the most important measure of water flow which is a quantitative characterization of the relative roughness of the inside of a pipe. And they'll argue that the higher the C-factor and the smoother the pipe, the less energy is required to pump water through it. First of all, these numbers require some explanation. Our recommended C-factor is evaluated using flow tests conducted on actual installations, whereas PVC pipe is tested in a lab. But more importantly, there is a much more significant factor to consider when you think about energy costs. It's actually the inside diameter of a pipe that more directly impacts the amount of energy required to pump through it, especially when the C factors are so similar to begin with. And this makes sense. As the inside diameter increases, the velocity of flow in the pipe decreases and with it, the head loss. This means that it will cost you less to pump through ductile iron pipe. In fact, if you look at a head-to-head -head comparison, you can see the difference. So let's start by comparing a ductile iron pipe and a PVC pipe. In this case, we're looking at 24-inch pipes. But as you can see, the inside diameter of the iron pipe is more than 2 inches larger than the PVC pipe. As we discussed earlier, this translates to a lower velocity and less head loss for the iron pipe. And when you factor in the cost of energy, you arrive at these pumping cost figures. This is an annual difference of more than $16,500. And when you consider the design service life of the pipe, that results in significant savings in terms of present worth. This means that, in this scenario, you will pay 37.7% less in pumping costs with ductile iron pipe than you will with a comparable 24-inch PVC pipe. The percentage of savings depends on pipe size, but clearly, using less energy makes good business sense for communities. But it's not just the cost of energy that is impacted by inside diameter. You can also convert these energy savings into reduced greenhouse gas emissions to measure the impact that the difference in pumping costs has on the environment. And the EPA has a tool on its website to help sort this information. Going back to our case study, we can start by converting our savings into energy using kilowatt hours. But once again, there's no need to take our word for it. Engineers and utility managers across the country have plenty to say about the environmental benefit. We definitely live in an age of green technologies, green infrastructure, things that are environmentally friendly, and uh, ductile iron pipe in itself is a green technology. It's made from recycled materials. Well, I've been to the foundries and I see machine, you know, motor engine blocks going into the hopper. And we do recycle our pipes, so it's, yeah, it's huge. Iron pipe provides a reduction in energy cost. It also uh, will allow us to uh, have a reduction in greenhouse gases released in the environment. Our system has focused on the reliability and the environmental issues, the positive, um, as related to ductile iron pipe. Ductile iron pipe installed with cement lining gives us added advantages to energy costs. We're able to pump more efficiently. When we choose materials for construction, we, we always consider environmental factors and, um, and ductile iron pipe is always our first choice. We take the environmental impact of our pipe very seriously, and that's why we're so proud of our SMART certification. This is a product certification based on consensus-based standards, the same kind of standards that are issued by the AWWA. It isn't just a pipe standard. It includes Monsanto carpeting, Forsbow flooring, Easton electronic products, Knoll office furniture, and others. As part of our certification, we provided an environmental LCI-LCA that takes everything that goes into the manufacture of the product and everything that results from the manufacturer, from the product itself to the waste materials that result. The LCA allows a manufacturer to see what parts of the process contribute the most to the environmental impact related to the manufacture and operation of the product, from cradle to grave. Sustainability requires a commitment to protect the health and safety of the workers who make the product, the people who live near the manufacturing facility, 
and the people who install, operate, and use the product. It isn't just a reference to how long the product serves, although durability plays a big part. It also involves a commitment to improve, which our industry has adopted. The Institute for Market Transformation to Sustainability, MTS, awarded us its Gold EPP rating thanks to the pipe's rankings in the following areas. Safe for public health and environment, renewable energy and energy reduction, recycled materials, facility or company requirements, innovation in design, innovation in manufacturing. The certification recognizes our commitment to the health and safety of employees and the public and to the improvement of ductile iron pipes' impact on the environment. And we have drafted our own environmental policy statement. The member companies of the Ductile Iron Pipe Research Association will uphold the following principles in all of their business activities through management, commitment, employee involvement, and allocation of adequate personnel and other resources. Compliance. We will manage our business activities to meet all governmental laws and regulations, as well as internally established environmental, health, and safety requirements. Our goal is 100% compliance 100% of the time. Protection. We will conduct our activities in a responsible manner to protect our employees, the public, and the environment by focusing on injury and illness prevention, pollution prevention, and minimizing impacts and risks to the environment from our operations. Improvement. We will continually improve our environmental health and safety performance with a primary focus on setting and achieving sustainable goals and objectives. This presentation has reviewed the entire life cycle of ductile iron pipe, but as we discussed, chances are that the pipe that is installed today will be asked to serve for generations to come. And so, clearly, the water pipe material that is chosen today is not just about 2014. It's about 2014 and beyond. At DIPRA, we believe that our job is to help your customers leave that legacy for their infrastructure, for the men and women who operate and maintain it, and for the long-term sustainability of their water systems. And we will continue to find ways to improve ductile iron pipe to make it better and more reliable. It's not an easy task, considering its wonderful history, but it's one we are committed to pursuing. Thank you. We'd love to hear from you at dipra.org slash virtual engineer with any questions or comments.